All right, so let's do the author demo that I talked about uh, earlier. And uh, now I think I will switch it up and I need to share my whole screen for this one. Um, okay, so let's see, and we have this one, make it close. Uh, so yeah, so um, here I'm going to show both um, a little bit with our CLI. So we have uh, the CLI uh, that Miral showed last time that I'm going to use. So I'm going to start a local um, local Enos backend, and I'm going to open up. Uh, yep. So there we have uh, Hasura and uh, Mailhog running uh, locally, and uh, let's see. Uh, we can see. All the uh, this is what we talked about last time, but we have uh, GraphQL authentication, storage, and functions. Everything running locally now. And uh, I prepared a uh, JavaScript uh, document here. So we have this new NOSJS uh, SDK uh, that I uh, just initialized like like this. So you can see the backend URL is localhost one three three seven, which is the sort of base URL that we're using. So. That's the base URL, and then it's like v1 GraphQL slash auth slash storage slash functions. And with this um, CLI, um, oh, sorry, with this SDK, you are able to interact with uh, uh, almost all parts of uh, nhost. So just to give you an example here, so we do uh, nhost dot, um, oh, this doesn't show very good, but you can do uh, auth to side, yeah, everything related to auth. You can even do GraphQL and send a request. Uh, we have like a lightweight GraphQL client here. Uh, storage to uh, upload files, for example, and the functions to uh, yeah, basically call functions. These are service functions that you have run. And um, SDK, uh, the SDK will take care take care of um, um, all access tokens and making sure the requests are sent with the correct uh, headers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so let's take a look. I prepared this to do's uh, table. Uh, so we have basically one, two, three items where is public is true. And then we have uh, two more items where is public is false. And if we go into the permissions here, we can see the role public, which is the role being used when you're not signed in as a user. Uh, so we can take a look at what you're allowed to see. So if you're not signed in, you're only allowed to see what is pub public. So if is public is true, you're allowed to see it. And users are allowed, like if you're a user and you're signed in, you are allowed to see everything. So if we just uh, go here and uh, start by just doing a request, GraphQL request with uh, a simple uh, GraphQL query to get all the to-dos, uh, we can see how, how that works. So you see, we, we get the three to-dos, we get uh, just the public ones. Um, now let's comment out this and uh, let's take a look at uh, sign up here. So this is very similar to how it uh, currently works. Uh, so you can sign up with email and password. Always scary to do live coding, but let's see. Um, yeah, so you see, we didn't get any error, but we didn't get any session either, which means um, you need to, uh, the user has to verify their email. And so if we go to Mailhog here, Mailhog uh, will run locally as well. So all emails going out, you will be able to catch here for to test locally. So you can see that I was actually sending this to my own email address, but for local development, uh, every, every email gets, uh, gets here. So I can click, uh, or before I click to verify, I can just, we can just go to the user's table. And uh, oh, I should have cleaned this up. Uh, let's let's remove these two. Uh, so if I scroll here, email verified is false, and you can see uh, this is the email address I'm using. So if I just click uh, click here, uh, I quickly get redirected uh, to my application with a refresh token, which means now I can sign in automatically to the to the application. But what happened in the mean like the First, it goes to the authentication server to verify the email address, and then I get automatically redirected to the to, to, to the application or to my front end application. So you can see now the email is verified. And uh, so if we go, yeah, we can just uh, make the same uh, request again. So now there's a conflict, which means you no, know, there's already an email with this user. 
And if I do sign in and I save, now I get like a session with a token and everything. So uh, I was able to successfully sign in. And if, uh, if we do the same request, let's uncomment these two. So the, this, the first request is uh, signed out and the other one is uh, when I'm signed in. Uh, we can see what uh, how this would work. Oh, I need to have this. Okay, so when I'm signed out, um, I get all just the to dos where uh, is public is true. So I only get three of those. Then I sign in and I make the same request. And now I can see all the to dos. So. Um, so that, that's how it works. So um, you saw that when I signed in, the tokens were stored locally or the SDK took care of it. And you know, when I sent a new GraphQL request, uh, the, the correct uh, headers were set. Uh, okay, so let's, uh, that was email and password. Now let's try only email. And this is um, uh, called passwordless email or magic link. So um, this is how it would work to um, sign in users without the password, basically. So uh, again, error. there is no error and I don't get a session because I need to, um, I probably got an email here. So secure sign in link. Uh, and I click, uh, I click the link and I'm automatically logged into my front end application. So I don't have a front end application running, but you can see localhost 3000 and I have a refresh token. So I can, so uh, I will get automatically signed in here if I had a front end application. So using passwordless uh, or magic link is, is uh, these three lines of code. And um, this works. Um, uh, so if, if there's no user already, the user will be created. And if there is already a user, it will use obviously that user. So if I do the same, it will be the same experience. Basically, it will basically create the user now. Um, and um, I will have a new sign-in link that I can log in with. Okay, so that's uh, email and password and uh, magic link. Now let's try a uh, phone number. So uh, this is my phone number. So uh, if you ever want to you know, if you're lonely. Uh, so this is like a two uh, step process. So you uh, will specify the phone number of the user you want to sign in. Uh, and that will uh, send a text message. So let's, uh, let's see if we can have this open here. All right, so I got the code here. So, and this is uh, what we call a one-time password that we would use. So, uh, and now I can just uh, add the one-time password, the OTP here. And I will run uh, the same request. And I'm logged in and I get a session and uh, I can start to interact with, you know, um, everything related to end hosts. And um, if I do the same request again with the same OTP, you know, I'm unauthorized because the one-time password is only, you know, are only allowed to use it once. And if we go to the database here, we now have two users. So one is uh, the one I was using um, with email and password. And the other one is, you know, the phone number uh, only. And, and all these signing methods can be, you know, combined. So if this user, if the first user here had an email and a phone number, they could use any signing method uh, they want, basically. All right. Uh, and so the last email method that we, uh, yeah, we also have is um, uh, using providers, right? So uh, a provider could be uh, GitHub, for example. Now this will not work cyber server side because if you would use this uh, in, a, in your front end application, it will redirect the user to the correct uh, links. Uh, but I will, I will just do it manually and uh, it will go to 1337, yeah, or sign in provider GitHub. And I would have to authorize and I would come back and automatically be, be signed in. And if we go to the users table here, um, yeah, we uh, we grab the display name from GitHub, we grab the avatar URL from GitHub, and the email address from GitHub. So 
everything is pre-filled in here. Uh, yeah, so that was the sign-in method that we've been working on together with uh, some uh, some new updates to the SDK. So we um, uh, we will have email password, magic link, uh, and uh, text message or phone number, and multiple providers that you can choose from. 